Hello and welcome to video 3 in my Q&A series for AS and A2 Biology. This one comes at the request of Benji who's asked for a video on the menstrual cycle. If you've got a question that you'd like answering or a concept that you'd like re-explaining in a different way, you can email me too at biologybyjp at gmail.com and I will see what I can put together for you. So let's get stuck into the menstrual cycle. I'm going to look at this in four different parts. So I'm going to look at the four hormones involved. I'm going to look at how they interact with one another. I'm going to look at the graph. And then finally, we'll look at how we can manipulate and mess with the hormones of the menstrual cycle to make us less fertile. So that's contraceptives. Interestingly, the menstrual cycle as a whole, only humans have the menstrual cycle. Only humans do this thing called the menstrual cycle. Other mammals do a similar thing, but we call it by a different name. We call it the estrus cycle. So menstrual cycle, purely humans. Estrus cycle, other mammals. Just keep that in mind. So let's look at the four hormones to begin with, the first of which is FSH, there we go, and this is follicle stimulating hormone. It's produced up in the brain by the anterior pituitary gland, and the main role, or the primary role I've said here, of this hormone is to stimulate the maturation or development of the follicle, and eventually that follicle, when it's fully developed, will contain a mature ovum. Moving on, we've got LH, which is luteinizing hormone also produced up in the brain by the anterior pituitary gland. And the primary role of this hormone is to stimulate ovulation. So that's the release of the mature ovum from the ovary. From there, we're going to move down to the ovaries. There are two hormones produced here, the first of which is estrogen. The American spelling estrogen is now widely accepted as well. And this is produced by the ovaries, like I've said, and the primary role of estrogen is to thicken the lining of the uterus, or the endometrium. And the reason for this is so that the fertilized egg, once it's developed into an embryo, can implant into that soft, squishy endometrium and allow it to develop. Which is where the next guy comes in. The next guy is called progesterone. And it's also produced in the ovaries. Realistically, it's produced by a structure called the corpus luteum, which is the empty follicle after ovulation. Um, and the primary role of progesterone is to maintain the thickness of the endometrium or uterus lining so that pregnancy can occur successfully. So they're the four hormones, where they're produced and what they do primarily. Let's have a look at how a couple of them interact with one another. Now, AQA, they really like the menstrual cycle as a topic to talk about different types of feedback, so negative and positive feedback. So it would take me forever to explain all the intricacies of these interactions between the four hormones, so I've concentrated on three main ones. Two examples of negative feedback and one example of positive feedback. Now, positive feedback is where a change away from a set value or set point is exaggerated, and negative feedback is where a change away from a set point is reversed or reduced or yeah we're, we're bringing it back to that set point really so here's the first one it's a negative feedback example and this is where estrogen at low concentration inhibits production of fsh and lh and on the right i've got a little diagram of this particularly looking at fsh so the pituitary gland is going to produce follicle stimulating hormone which is going to cause the ovary to produce estrogen but that estrogen is going to negatively affect the pituitary gland. It's going to stop production or reduce or inhibit production of FSH, which in turn means there's going to be less stimulation of estrogen production by the ovary. So this is estrogen almost self-regulating itself. So estrogen levels rise, FSH production is switched off, therefore less estrogen will be produced and the levels come back down. So this is negative feedback. Positive feedback, here's another example, or here's a different example, sorry. This is where estrogen at high concentration stimulates both FSH and LH. So here I'm looking at LH and how the pituitary gland stimulates luteinizing hormone and releases it. Loads of it comes out. This causes the ovaries to release estrogen. And this positively this time affects the pituitary gland. So more estrogen means more LH will be, be produced, which in turn means more estrogen will be produced, which in turn means more LH will be produced. You get the idea. It goes on and on and on. Last one is going to be negative feedback, and this is progesterone at high concentration inhibiting FSH and LH. And this one we're looking at progesterone and LH on the diagram. So pituitary produces luteinizing hormone, 
and this causes the corpus luteum to produce more progesterone but that progesterone is going to inhibit the pituitary from producing more LH and therefore reducing the levels of progesterone this is again another self-regulating little cycle so these ones are really key AQA loves them as examples of feedback these are the ones to learn so let's have a look at the whole cycle we're going to start with FSH being produced by the pituitary gland. This is going to result in the follicle maturing and releasing, releasing estrogen, which causes the lining of the uterus to thicken. The follicle develops and causes more estrogen to be released. FSH and LH production are then stimulated. This results in ovulation. Progesterone is then going to be produced by the empty follicle or the corpus luteum, and FSH and LH production are inhibited. Progesterone production is then going to stop. And FSH is then no longer prohibited or inhibited, which allows us to restart the cycle after menstruation. And we're back to the beginning. So this is probably the bare minimum amount of detail that you need. Um, there are still quite a lot of steps, but this pretty much covers it, along with the previous interactions that I've talked about. So by knowing what the four hormones do, where they're produced, what they act on, all the subtle little interactions and this cycle, this is what you need to know. Let's have a look at the graph now. Now this is a horrible looking thing. At the bottom we've got the thickness of the endometrium. In the middle we've got the levels of the different hormones. And at the top we've got what's going on in the follicle. Key things to identify. You need to be able to identify ovulation. Some people think, oh well in humans it happens on day 14. Yeah, that's completely true, but as we'll see in a minute, they're not likely to give you a human graph. So you need to know that where the LH peak is, that's where ovulation is going to occur. Other things, if the progesterone level doesn't drop off, if it's maintained at the end of the cycle, that means that the organism is pregnant or the mammal is pregnant. Unlikely to be a human graph. For some reason, I think female students are going to be more likely to know exactly when LH is peaking and exactly when ovulation is, is occurring. So they usually use sheep or goats or pigs or cows or something like that. And also be aware that they might not always show you the same slice of the menstrual cycle. They may sort of um, move it along a bit so you get two LH peaks to try and throw you. Just be really, really aware of that. You should also be able to identify each hormone from the line on the graph. Look for the peaks. So in particular, you know, the peak of LH and FSH both occur at the same time. Estrogen has a sort of double peak with the first peak being bigger and progesterone only peaks once and it's right at the end of the cycle when the endometrium is the thickest. We should also talk about contraceptives which is where, the way we manipulate the menstrual cycle through our knowledge of the interactions of the various hormones. Contraceptives must contain hormones which either stop the maturation of the follicle or ovulation or both. So hormones, pills, hormone pills or implants or whatever you're going to use as a, as a hormone based contraceptive probably going to contain estrogen. Estrogen is going to inhibit FSH and LH. So if you've got no FSH you can't produce a mature follicle. If you've got no LH, you can't do ovulation. Similarly, some of them also contain progesterone, which in turn is going to inhibit FSH and LH. So again, no FSH, that means no mature follicle. No LH means no ovulation. And that's everything. That's as much as I can cram into this little video. Um, I hope it's helped. If you've got any further questions, you know what to do. You can email me at biologybyjp at gmail.com if you've got any other menstrual cycle or any other topics off AS or A2 Biology. Get in touch and I will see what I can do for you. Benji, I hope this has helped. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe, guys. Goodbye.